This photograph was between the pages of the Gazette. What photograph? Jones and Rutherford. They confessed to aiding the underground and being in Eurasia during hate week. But here it says... What are you talking about, Smith? I don't see any photograph. I'm still into conjuring. I know it's a, a grotty, grimy, kind of glamorous thing, but, you know, I'm not talking stupid stage illusions. I kind of like coins and cards. It's a passive interest. I'm not trying to be great at it. It's just something I indulge in. And earlier on, I was watching a video. It's Penn and Teller getting fooled. They have, like, amateur, or not amateur, but unknown magicians come on and they try and con them anyway. One of Penn and Teller, Teller, doesn't talk is his hilarious joke. He's very much based his character on Harpo Marx. He looks a bit like him. He only needs a and you'd be confused as to who was whom. However, in the show he said today the magician made some sort of joke at him and because he doesn't talk he gave him the finger. On YouTube, the clip was on YouTube. And this was edited out. This was blurred. And it really hit me. It really hit me being, you know, being sort of intellectually immersed in cop um, censorship and deplatforming most of the time, being aware of it. It really struck me, that kind of passive censorship, that kind of other people looking out for what we can see and hear, looking out for words they want to protect us from. And just that little blurry circle over this grown man's finger really, really hit me hard. I kind of fell onto my desk and just thought, is this really who we are? Is this really what we've come to? I mean, who made that fucking decision to blur that out? For what reason? Who's being protected? Children? Children, they're either too young to know what that means or give a fuck what that means or old enough to make that next to nothing on the scale of dirty words and actions they are already aware of. Have you ever seen a kid's toilet at a school? Have you ever seen what's written on the walls? Are they protecting children? Are they protecting adults? Is this about protection? Doesn't seem like it. Seems like power. Feels like control. There's that bit in 1984 where one of, the, one of Winston's friends is kind of effervescent about the fact that the dictionary is getting smaller. And he, he, he laughs and he says to Winston, it's strange to think in just a few years' time we won't be able to have this conversation. Double plus good, eh? What... I think what was really striking about that blurring was how... it's almost not... It's, it's almost nothing. It was almost nothing to me, someone who is engaged in censorship and, you know, the, the, the politics of free speech. And that everyone who sees that kind of has the same thought and it's like, well, you know. It's almost like there's this artificial world and we come back here to the utopia fallacy. This idea of comparing something with, with, a, with, with a dream, with something that doesn't exist. You know, when you hear predominantly young leftists, they'll always say to you, the world's a fucking mess. Look at the state of this world. You know, capitalism is ruining the world. And yet, what have they got to compare it to? Because what we've actually got is the past. And in relation to its own past, it's looking pretty good. It's not perfect. Why, why would it be? 
Do you understand what's going on there? The organisation of societies. Think of yourself. Think of your own life. Think of how exciting and, 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 and dynamic your own life is and the problems that it gets and the engagements you have and, like I say, the dynamism of your own life, the consumptions you do. Physical, actual, but also emotional, poetic. And then the production you're engaged in and all the all those ripples you put out into the world and all those ripples you receive and all those ripples that cross over and form little cultural nodes of many, many lines of cultural force made up of histories and geographies and contemporaries. Think of that. That's just you. Then there's your family and your friends. And think of all those things competing with each other, engaging with each other, making demands of each other, and yielding to each other. And that is a dramatic, dynamic flow of all sorts of determinations, not just genetic, not just environmental, but also in here, with each other. And then it's not just in here consciousness, because we're all conscious of our consciousness, we make decisions, choices, selections. But the unconscious as well. This part of us which also makes decisions, selections, which also makes choices, which is also its own field of determinants. And yet you are unconscious of that. Take it back to the individual. What a crazy world. The friends, the family. The insanity of trying to organise that positively. And then that becomes the street and it's just mayhem now in terms of organisation, requirements, wants, desires, needs, realities, road, estate, village, town, city, nation. Continent, planet, it's just something else. And to look at it and say it's a fucking mess, to look at the world, oh, look at it, capitalism, you ungrateful little shit. The amount of leisure time the majority of the developed world have, the, the amount of work we actually have to do, and is there food on the table again? Yes. Is there shelter? Is there heat? Yes. Is there entertainment? Yes. Is there love? Yes. And you're still complaining because you still think it's better. The arrogance of you bastards. Because what you're saying, of course, you could do it better. Yeah. You, 22-year-old, gender studies graduate with fuck-all life experience is telling the rest of us you could do it better. You can organise societies better than this. You can run economies. You've got something better than the free market. <laughs> amazing. The free market, what an amazing thing. It's a situation of exchange where both parties do well. Both parties get what they want. Both parties' lives are improved after it. But you've got something better than that. <laughs> really? The future doesn't need people like you. You have a Nirvana fallacy. You've got this idea of a brave, brave new world where no one gets called names anymore because of hate speech. We've got hate speech protecting us now. Yeah, we got rid of free speech. Someone commented on one of my videos saying they got a five-day ban from Facebook. What was it for now? Oh, yeah, for saying that trans people have got a mental illness called uh, gender dysphoria got banned for that. Not allowed to say that. Not allowed to say the truth. Why? Who's getting hurt? Blur it out. You'll be all right. Devon Tracy, atheism is unstoppable. He spoke to Jared Taylor. Went into limited state. Who the fuck is being protected from these ideas? Who needs to be? 
No one. It's not about protection. They wouldn't give a fuck if everyone knew it. It's about power. It's about the bigger picture of control. And now we become a docile, lumpen proletariat. Hasn't it come quickly? Isn't it escalating? What is it? It's accelerating. Acceleration is when it gets faster, but it gets faster, faster. Exponential. They're clamping down. They're shutting people up. They're slowing us down. They're not letting adults see a man go like that. The people in the theatre, the 2,000 people who saw that live, who paid to see it, do you know what their response was? Because they didn't see the blur. They saw the finger. A human finger. They all laughed. <laughs> they thought it was funny because it was a joke. But oh no. Oh no. I suppose the assumption is there might be one or two people in the world who'd be offended by that. So the rest of us can't see it. And that's where we are. That's what we've become. Kids used to go through rituals to take them into adulthood, both men and women. Rites of passage, painful, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually painful. And growing. You don't get growth without pain. You want to try and get those weeds up through concrete, you've got to snap your neck a little bit. You don't protect kids to help them grow, you expose them. But that's not us. Our society is measured by what it refuses to let us see. And at the moment, that's a finger. It's a human finger. What a mess. <laughs>